Hey everybody, this is uh, Line, <clears throat> and I'm doing a uh, coloring tonight as a quick test of uh, a zombie from Paranorman. Uh, something that I pulled out of this main illustration that I have been working on. Um, I'll show you really right here real quick. Let's see. Um, there we go. This is one of the last shots of it before I uh, started coloring. I did a base coat uh, the other night, uh, which looks like this, which isn't too good. Well, let's go back to Photoshop. Hey, Photoshop, what are you doing? There you are. So let's close this up real quick, and we'll continue on our journey to do this zombie. Okay. So, uh, <clears throat> I don't know, I wasn't really thinking of doing a tutorial, but I guess I could give a little info. I'm using the, uh, whatever this tool is called, what is it, the Magic Wand tool. And it's got a tolerance up here set to 12. And it's got anti-alias set on and contiguous uh, on. And I'm just holding shift and I'm clicking in different spots to select layers. And uh, what I'm trying to do is I just want to color inside the character itself. So I want to get all the areas outside the character. So even between the legs, that would be considered outside the character because it's not going to be color that's going to be, you know, the character itself. So I got in between the feet here on the bottom, in between the legs and the thigh area. And also there's a spot here uh, in the hand, which you can see I'm zooming in. And then I'm going to get this spot here in the thumb and the pinky. I think that's what that is, at least. Hmm. Yeah, that's strange. I think I have to delete that. I don't know why there's that extra line there. But, uh, hold on, let me go reselect that. Um, alright, so for now, I'm just gonna go to the top of the menu. Uh, but I see my Photoshop is acting up because of the, what I had done. So let's see. Oh, there we go. Okay. Salt. F. Um, we're going to do select, and then we're going to choose inverse. So we're inverting the selection, because first we selected the outside and all the stuff that wasn't the zombie. And uh, now I'm going to do selection, and I'm going to contract by one pixel. And the reason why we're doing that is because when I'm going to color, um, I'm going to color, you know, within one pixel from the outside of where the black lines of my illustration are. So we don't really need to stick out that far. And sometimes when you're, when you do the selection tool and you do what I just did by inverting the selection, it, uh, sometimes the colors bleed past the black lines. So, uh, that's why I did what I did. So we inverted the selection and then we contracted by one pixel. So I made a new line, a new layer. I'm going to make a new folder. And then with that folder, I'm going to select the masking button. So I'm going to add layer mask onto that folder. And I'm going to put a layer, put the layer that I had made into that folder. So this will be our coloring layer. And I already had chosen a color of blue, which is going to be for his outfit. Uh, and I'm only going to paint where the outfit's going to show. Uh, so we're doing his pants. Get a little bit of his feet in there, which is okay. We're going to repaint over that later. So because we already did the masking out, we don't have to be perfect. Because we're not going to have to worry about it going outside the lines, because it's not going to. At least I hope it won't. If there is anything going outside the lines because of the way I selected it, we'll go back and fix that up uh, later on. So now I'm erasing a little bit. Um, in that base code I showed you earlier of uh, Paranorman, I had uh, put all the colors on one layer. And while that may be good for some people, I still feel that um, in Photoshop, when using Photoshop, it's actually cool to have your 
colored objects on different layers because um, when you decide that you want to add shading or different tones and stuff, uh, having the different objects on different layers uh, makes it a lot uh, less complex to get those colors in because you, you might start adding shades to one just like the fabric or like an arm or something that you don't want to affect other parts of your uh, content in your artwork um, but if it's all on one layer then of course you're going to so you want to mask it out I think is a good idea I think it's a good idea uh, I'm going to pause right here. You guys won't notice the pause, but I will. I just want to do a quick audio test, and then I'll go back to recording. Okay, I'm back. And you guys didn't notice anything. It's almost like I went through time travel. Yeah! Back to the future! Okay. So, I'm coloring and coloring. Uh, one other feature uh, when you're coloring that you may want to consider, uh, which I'm going to do right now, is I, I always use the eyedropper tool to select the colors that I'm using. And some people leave, you know, their swatches out so they can easily select colors, you know, when they want them. Um, and that's probably good practice. Maybe at a later date, I'll figure out, you know, the best way to do that. I, I know that there are some recent color things that are in the new CS6, so like your recent colors will show up when you're selecting colors. Um, but I don't know how to do that. So, But right now what I'm going to show you is, see, I, I use the eyedropper tool and I chose the color I want. If I clicked on here, oh, I see. Never mind. It's currently set to current layers, but uh, so that's a new feature. Uh, sometimes it's set to all. Most of the time it's set to all layers. Uh, in actuality, nope, I'm totally wrong. It was in the previous versions of CS5 uh, and maybe 4. Um, but yeah, what I was going to say as a tip is to select the current layer. Uh, so this way when you're selecting color, you're not going to select a combination of colors. Um, so let's say right here, like, I don't know if you could tell on your screen, but I have the eyedropper uh, where there's a little bit of transparent black on top of the blue. Uh, navy blue color that I've got going on here and if I were to select it with all layers as the sampling area it would actually give me the darker blue because of the black transparency on top of it so you want to get the current layer which is just our base layer of color um, to get the color we want so but as mentioned a moment ago I'm just gonna color the clothes that are blue and this is a little bit of a practice uh, coloring thing that I'm doing because I'm going to um, color that other Paranorman piece and I just want to do a quick uh, recording and see how everything turns out. Because I haven't used Camtasia in a bit. We'll upload this to YouTube. A little idea. Um, and another thing that's good to do is to name your uh, folder. Name your folders and your layers. So this way it's easier for you to figure out uh, what layers are for what colors or drawings that you've made. Because the little thumbnails that they have in uh, Photoshop, they aren't too useful. Maybe in a future version of Photoshop, when you put your mouse over a layer, maybe they'll give you a, a blown-up version. 
of what's in that layer. That'd be pretty cool. A little hover over preview. So Adobe, if you're listening, give us a little preview, larger preview thumbnail. So this way we get a little better idea of what's actually in that layer. Sometimes people may only color like a little piece, like a maybe they're just doing the fingernails and it's hard to see, you know, fingernails. Uh, you know what? Maybe I'll do his hat too. See, there's a little bleed through over there on top. So as you see right towards the top of the canvas there. So what we'll do is we'll click on the mask layer. And then when we select the brush, uh, make sure you set your default colors. Because even though uh, you switch to the mask layer, Sometimes what happens is, even though it looks like it's black in the uh, default colors on the toolbar, it's a, it may not actually be full black, so it may actually let colors bleed through. So you want black black. So you want to make sure you hit D for default, or uh, there may be another. Oh, you just click on the black and white uh, colors over here on the toolbar, and that'll make it your official black. Um, And I think there was also some bleed through right here, so I'll just fix that up. And I also see some extra lines here, so I'm going to, oops, go to the eraser tool and just erase the extra line I don't need. This is all a digital drawing, so I don't, you know, I know what's going on. I can always fix stuff up if I need to. Um, and this finger really is bothering me, so I'm gonna, I don't even know that's a finger. I think it's just a mistake. So we're deleting that out of there, and then we'll go back to the mask layer, and uh, we'll color it in. The thing that sort of sucks about masks is you can't really see where you're painting. Um, there might be an option for that, but as of right now, I don't know uh, that there is uh, a way to see the mask itself. Um, Alright, so let's continue. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Uh, Alright, so that is the clothing and the hat. So we're going to name it as I had mentioned naming it. Clothing and hat. And make a new layer. We'll call this belt. That'll be for the belt around his pants. And I think in Paranormal it might have been the brown leather. So, but who knows, maybe it's black. Not 100% sure. I should probably go and, you know, do a little uh, work in looking at some stills from their uh, official website, paranorman.com. So it looks like I have some cleanup to do. <laughs> the uh, fixing up that I was mentioning is going to be with the uh, original clothing because I noticed that there's some blue that needs to be added in. As you can see, um, The leather belt, when I was coloring it, was sort of going in a certain, it was going over the black, and the black didn't have, um, well, the brown was just in the wrong spot, that's all. So now back on the leather belt area, painting that, painting that, okay.
Okay. So, leather belt done. Uh, now let's do the zombie. Zombie skin. And the zombie had like a greenish tone to it. Greenish blue. Uh, that time when I selected the uh, eyedropper, and I, I did choose all layers that time, uh, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get tones all to be the same when I color, so the shading is all the same, but I chose the greenish color that I want. So later on when I do my uh, lighting and shading the way I normally do it, uh, it should come out just right. I see uh, that I'm not hitting all the white areas. For some reason, it's not going through. So it looks like I have to open up the mask a little bit. Um, so after I finish painting the green here, oh, and it looks like I also have to mask some more on the left side of the canvas. There's a little bleed through going on. All right. So there we go. Face. Hey, toes and feet. Now I'm going to fix that mask up on the top layer and get some of these colors in here. I know I painted the green, but let's be 100% sure. Do the default, the brush, and see that green come through. Okay. Okay. And then we'll go over here on the left side of the canvas and we'll fix that bleed. I see there's actually two pieces of bleed we need to adjust. So go to the black. Black masks things out. And white lets it bleed through. Just in case you didn't know how masks work. OK. 
Okay. Uh, another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a background color in here just for now. Uh, we'll choose like a greenish yellow. It's got a little bit more green, yellow in there, I mean. Okay. This may be a little too bright. So, we're going to go to Image, Adjust, Hue Saturation, and lower the brightness this way. Yeah, let's make it dark, actually. Alright, so that should be good. Do do do. Alright, so we did the zombie skin. Now let's uh, do some zombie bones. I'll just call this bones. Put in a new layer. And... Alright, real quick, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to look at a zombie reference picture uh, in the web browser. Zombie Paranorman. Now, I'm not going to do, you know, 100% the same, but I'll just look at it to get an idea. Do, 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 do. Okay. All right. Good. Good. What I wanted to double check was that the teeth weren't actually white, white, because you know, a they're dead, and b, you know, just like everybody, you know, your teeth aren't naturally super white. Usually they are. Um, your teeth and your bones usually have like a yellowish tinge to them because you know, uh, it just comes with eating your food and as much as you can brush your teeth just naturally get yellower. Uh, so I'll make this yellow. And, uh, you know what? Let me do what I did before. Make sure we keep the same tones. So now we'll go back to that yellow color. So it'll be like a dark. I'm not going to make it as dark. Let's go up. Hmm. Actually, you know what? Let's stick to my first suggestion. I'll leave it as that color. So it's dark. Yellow. So later on, we'll add the highlights and stuff if we want it to be lighter. Um, so we have the bones in here. His spine. Uh, whoops. Went a little too far out. Vertebrae. It's actually a little difficult to see uh, where I need to color, so I'm going to turn off the background real quick, or just put a white one in. So let's do that. White. Okay, so yeah, it looks like we missed a lot of spots. Um, let's choose current layer. We don't have anything muddy. Muddied up. And back to coloring. Funny how you miss things when it's a dark background. So perhaps that wasn't a good idea. But then again, maybe it is a good idea because I guess you just want to see contrasting colors when you're doing this. Uh, my line work isn't. Uh, super tight as far as all the lines being closed as well as they could be but you know we'll do with what we've got mm. 
replace that and I'll put some blue one in there. Okay. Yeah, blue in there too. Alright, so let's go back to our clothing level. And select our blue. And we'll zoom in. Go in there and get some blue in there. get the inside of the mouth. Um, even though I, you know, I'm doing different layers for like the teeth, I'm wondering, do I need to do a different layer for the tongue? Uh, I guess I don't have to be so specific, so let's get that tongue. We'll do the tongue a uh, a dark red, a little desaturated since he's dead. Mm, but hold on, let's do the tone edge again. All layer, red. Maybe more towards the purple. Seems all right. It looks like the bones in the uh, layer. I didn't color all the teeth all the way through, so let's do current layer again. That seems all right. I think one other thing I'm going to do with the skin layer is I'll do the gums as well. Oh, this is his lip. Uh, okay, yeah, we'll leave the lip the same color. But the gums will... hair too. And we'll turn that background later on so I can see. So I'm sort of painting with a light color here. So I'll do this part with a light gray. Okay, oh, and it looks like I need to do an eyeball. Uh, yeah, I guess I could do the eyeball in here as well. Okay. His other eye is gone, so that's why it's not being colored in. Just in case you had any wonderments. Wonderments? In case you were wondering. <laughs> Gosh, creating my own language. Great. Alright, so now I guess I can just start doing my shading. I'm just going to do uh, 
Oh, nope. You know what I realized? I didn't do his collar. Alrighty. Clothing. They have like these like doily collar things on some of them, but this guy it's just a white collar. a little thicker because taking up a little bit more space. Get this done to look faster. Hmm, I did too much into the uh, face there. Sometimes it's good to lift up your brush or lift up pressing off of your tablet if you're using one or your mouse. Uh, so this way you'll have less undos. Sometimes when you do too much coloring and you undo, some of the stuff that you did want gets undone. So there we are. So I think I'm done with coloring my base stuff. But I feel like this is too light. So let's go back in here again. We'll just darken this up a bit. Probably should have done my technique, which I didn't do. Uh, Let's go over here. I'll stay on the same uh, like line. Like this whole layer is like all the same tone. So let's go over here to desaturate it a bit because we don't want it to be yellow as much. And color in. Yeah. So that's more of what I was looking for. Alright, so it looks like I had made a new layer, I guess, for doing my lighting and shading. Uh, I'm gonna just try... Why can't I escape? There we go. Uh, lighting. So I'm just gonna do my two colors, which is white and black. And... Uh... Yeah. I'll say the lighting is, uh... Like in the fr in front of him but in like the top left corner so we'll get some of his face lit up and we'll choose the layer blending mode as overlay there we go
Mm, we're going to have to go back a little bit and uh, adjust the coloring. I see there, there's a belt buckle I had drawn on the hat I forgot about. I'm trying to imagine how much of uh, this character has been seen by the light. So if it's, uh, it's just above his hand, I'm gonna guess, or or it's above his hand, stretched out, and it's like over here on the left. Maybe I should draw it on the outside so you guys can see. Uh, let me name my inks layer inks, and so we got our light source over here. Bing, bing, bing. It's actually a little higher. Yeah, so it's like that. This way you get an idea of what I'm imagining when I'm putting on my lighting and shading. Uh, I'm going to pretend that maybe his arm back here is behind him, so maybe a little bit comes through here and a little bit underneath on the bottom part. It's very, you know, a small amount. So just enough cracks through. Uh, but in actual that doesn't make sense, does it? Yeah, maybe it wouldn't crack through. Alright, so it's in front of him, over there. So maybe a little bit is coming on the top then. Okay, I think that makes sense to me. Hopefully that makes sense to you. I am realizing this is coming up to uh, 40 minutes of coloring, so this isn't going to be too exciting to watch. I don't know, maybe you guys do like this kind of stuff, but I don't know. Do, do, do. I guess I'll continue. Well, I'm going to continue no matter what, but I just figured you know, I'll think about you guys for a moment as I'm doing this. Maybe I'll do like a uh, a time lapse version. So all this talking that I'm doing right now, you won't get to hear. It'll just be all my painting going really, really fast. People like that stuff, I think. If you like it, just let me know. I like to know if you know should do more.
Oh, and as like a little discussion thing, I like to make new friends on the internet. I'm a internet uh, child of the internet, as I say sometimes. And it's cool to meet new people, especially who are like-minded individuals and art or whatever. And if you happen to see have seen uh, Paranorman, feel free to uh, post a comment with the video and let me know what you thought of it. I thought it was really good. I had a, quite a few laughs in the movie. With some good ideas, it had a nice uh, story towards you know the whole thing throughout the whole thing. Good meaning. Um, definitely good for young kids as well as the adults. All right, so that's my lighting. Now let's do a shading layer. I don't think I typed that properly, but that's okay. Whoops. Since his fingers are right there, it'll give some nice harsh shading below. And a little under. And we'll set this to overlay as well. And change the opacity. Uh, 60 is okay. We'll darken all this. Maybe put a little, you know, just allow hints of light to hit the bone down here.
I'm thinking I need to add more lighting to the face. Just something about the way it's coming through. Okay. Okay, I did put some on the teeth. I think I'm going to erase them off the teeth. There we go. Yeah. I think I like that. In the same lighting layer, I'm going to also, uh, actually I probably shouldn't do this, I should just make one layer called white. Um, so let's do that. One folder, we'll call it white. And this is for like highlighting stuff. And the only thing I'm going to highlight is the eyeball. Uh, the shine on the eye. So I feel like that should pop a bit. Yeah, that's fine. And that was the skin layer. I feel like I should change that a little bit. Maybe it's a little too bright. So I'm not going to do that with just the shading layer. Let's do that with the actual layer itself, skin. Alright, so we're going to choose the layer where the normal colors are. And then we'll choose the color here. And there we go. So that's a little bit more believable, I think. Or it's just a lot nicer for sure. Default colors, brush black. And we can add in some dark here, put some dark here because the light's really going to come on one side. Lighting layer. Okay, we already hi highlighted stuff. But let's go in a little deep. Really, you know, I shouldn't have to, wouldn't, or don't have to put detail this deep in, but. I feel like it just needs hints of light to make it pop better. Hmm. Okay. And that white layer. Yeah, I think I'm pretty happy with this so far. Mm, maybe do a little bit more with the upper chest area. Oopsie, wrong layer. Let's delete that one. I had made an extra layer before when I was thinking of putting the white on top of the lighting zone.
turn off that light. Put a little shade down at the bottom. Yeah, so I'm happy with this. I'm going to save this, upload it to facebook.com forward slash line artist, put it on linedetail.deviantart.com, and also on my Google Plus page. Uh, thanks again, this is Line, and if you want to see my other work, I'm going to be updating my main like company site for the Line Detail Drawing Company, which is linedetail.com at a later date maybe in like a couple of weeks um, and have more art on it uh, but for now this is it thanks for checking out the video guys peace